Hello guys and welcome to the world of WWE. Today I'm doing my review for Extreme Rules, which is a really good pay per view. I really enjoyed it. There were it wasn't perfect, but I personally really enjoyed it. Let's get on to the pay per view. On the kickoff show, we had some she's getting up. I didn't even know this match was confirmed or something. We had Shinsuke Nakamura defeating Finn Balor, and he's your new winner, Carnell Champion. He won in 7 minutes and 40 seconds. I was like, what? What the? I was not expecting this here. So, here's what I think about it. Uh, if they're going to book Shinsuke Nakamura white and make him entertain again, by all means, give him the title. And our rumor is that after SummerSlam, Finn Balor's going to have like a two month break. And so Finn Balor's now on the rivalry with Bray Wyatt, which makes sense for, which is why it would make sense for cause Bray Wyatt to win and um, Finn Balor to have the time off and for she's going to win the Intercontinental title. But I'm ex so I'm interested to see what they're gonna do, which is Eric Bischoff is gonna do with Shinsuke Nakamura because he won SmackDown. So I'm interested. So yeah, it was a decent. It was decent. I was like, oh okay, I can dig it. I can dig. I can dig some more. Uh, Samoa, Shinsuke Nakamura being a new champion, I can dig it. Okay, next match on the Kickoff show, we had Drew Gulak def successfully defending the Cruiserweight tower against Co Tony Nese. The match lasted 7 minutes and 25 seconds, and it was alright. Um, they don't, WWE don't really give the main Ross 205 Live the time to shine and show how good they really are. So considering that, it was um, very good. Uh, by the way, my window's open, so if you're going to... And no, that noise may come for you. So it was like, it, man, it was alright. It's it was just there. But okay, now, but overall, the King of Shots was re I really liked. I would much rather those two matches be flipped. But yeah, so yeah, let's get on to the main card. The first match of the main card. It was the Undertaker and Roman Reigns defeating Shane McMahon and Drew McIntyre in a no holds bar tag team match. The match lasted 17 minutes. To 17 minutes. I was very surprised about just how good the match was. I think it's Undertaker looked great. Roman Reigns looked great. No one really looks bad in the match. And the stare down between Undertaker and Drew McIntyre I really liked. Elias got involved, but he was just kind of like there. Because I wanted him on the card, I guess. So, yeah. I was really surprised at the outcome because I thought. Uh, Shane McMahon and Drew McIntyre were going to win and they were going to continue the rivalry. But clearly they're not and they're getting the win to Undertaker and Roman Reigns. It was a great way to kick off the pay-per-view. It was a really fun match. I was really surprised. If Undertaker's going to do more like this, even if he needs to be a few more tag matches like here, if he's able to do all of this, then by all means have him wrestle a few more matches. But I do think he should retire at WrestleMania. 30. See, it was a great match. Now let's get to the next, next match. Shockingly, the Royal Rivals successfully defended their ta World Tag Team Championships against the Usos. The match lasted 12 minutes and 35 seconds. Well, the reason why I say surprising you because I have they like, signed new deal, new, new deals, <laughs> new deals because they didn't win with any shenanigans. They beat them clean in a pretty decent match. Of course, the crowd was a bit dead after that. Really impressive match we had, but yeah, I really liked it. I'm like, if they're gonna continue the rivalry, then by all means do it. Continue the rivalry. I'll be interested in it as long as it ends with the Usos winning, because I do think, because the Revival haven't done anything with their titles. They've did nothing since winning their titles. They were just ha having a parties with Shane McMahon. Then they just randomly retained here, so. Um, yeah, I do think they should probably lose them at some time. Next up, it was As the Black defeating Cesaro in 9 minutes and 45 seconds in a very good match. It didn't need to be 20 minutes long ever. These both, it's just two great wrestlers having a great match. What else can I say? The White Man won as well, of course, As the Black winning with the Black Mask. And a long time I've been saying Black Mask. I don't know why, I just think it sounds cooler than Black Mask, but... Yeah, it was still a great match. Very enjoyed. There were some really cool spots. It, it helped build as the Black as the star. Um, hopefully, I don't. I think he's a baby face. It's hard to tell, uh, because he's facing Hill Cesaro. Also, I would love to see Shinsuke versus Alistair Black. 
Even if it may, uh, of course, uh, Alistair Black should win. Like, some, Shinsuke isn't really, of I was interested in it, it's not like somehow if he's facing Alistair Black, I think it'd be better if Alistair Black just won the title. But I would be very interested in the match, very looking forward. It'd feel more like a work curb belt. The reason why people loved it in the first place. So, yeah, next up, surprisingly, uh, well, kind of surprisingly, I kind of predicted it. Bailey defeated Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss in a handicap match for the SmackDown Women's Championship. The match lasted 10 minutes and 30 seconds. The reason why I say it's probably because she won clean, no, she, she pretty much destroyed them. I was like, it was alright. It certainly wasn't top notch for a pay per view, but it was great. It was pretty good. I really liked it. It was a nice kind of way to pace out the show after having a good match with a really good match with Asta Black and Cesaro. So yeah, next up, Braun Strowman defeated Bobby Lashley in the last man standing match. The match lasted 17 minutes and 30 seconds. It was a very good match. I, it was just two men destroying them, each other, kicking the living hell out of each other. And it made me like Braun Strowman again. Bobby Lashley's alright, but Braun Strowman's really the highlight for me. Although it, it has done nothing for him long term, if you think about it, considering he's not going to Universal Time match. I'm still really looking forward to what they're going to do because they've made me interested in Braun Strowman, which I never thought I'd be in again, ever again, so don't ruin it, WWE, please. So yeah, Braun Strowman wins, it was really good. The crowd loved it, I loved it, so yeah. Next up, The New Day defeated, The New Day being Big E and Xavier Woods, defeating Rowan and Daniel Bryan and Rowan, sorry, and Heavy Machine, which are Otis and Tucker, in a triple threat tag team match for the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. So, a uh, match lasted 14 minutes, so the New Day are your new champions. Really good match. I really like the ending. I thought Daniel Bryan and Rowan were going to take, because I'm certain, like, I thought he's injured, considering he hasn't had any matches. I thought Kofi Kings was injured, considering he didn't have any matches recently on television. So, but clearly he's not, which is cool, I guess. So, yeah, the New Day win. They're the new champs, six-time tag team champions. Hopefully they can do something, because they're, after having their wife, the most recent one, after be defeating the Bludgeon Brothers, wasn't that memorable. It was just like, um, it was like a really kind of stale kickoff show rivalry with the, we seven eight in English, which is very forgettable. Then arrived with the bar, just for the bar. It was just matches. Pretty much the entire all their rivalries were just matches. There was nothing special about the matches. They were just matches. So yeah. So hopefully New Day can have a better one this time. Next up, it was AJ Styles with Luke Gallows and Kurt Anderson defeating Ricochet to become the new United States Championship in a singles match. The match lasted 60 minutes and 30 seconds. The match was really good, I really liked it, but the crowd just was so dead. Nobody cared about the match in the crowd, which I felt really bad for, because the match was actually very good. It had this door in the... Because uh, AJ Styles was the champ, Luke Gallows and Kurt Anderson were helping AJ Styles the entire time, making it like a three on one handicap match. So, yeah, I do, I like the fact AJ Styles is the champion, just so they can continue the rivalry. But I do think he should lose the title back at SummerSlams, where we have the blow-off match for the rivalry. Ricochet's champion again, because I think that's going to benefit um, Ricochet. Yes, he did have a short title run, but I think if he wins it back at SummerSlam, clean, maybe even with, even if he beats him with her, or they just ban for him, beats AJ Styles clean... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, that would benefit Ricochet. So I'm happy with it. AJ Styles to the United States champion. So yeah, here's another match that I didn't know was gonna happen. It was Kevin Owens versus Dolph Ziggler. Kevin Owens won in 17, 17 seconds. I'm like, it's fine, okay. If you want to legitimize the stunner as a finisher, legitimize it, I guess. But there was no need for it. They so they were, this felt like they were just wanted to make the pay-per-view a certain amount of time because afterwards he basically did a promo about all these people not being on TV and I agree with him, I found it entertaining promo but um, yeah, I just think this was a bit of a waste of time you could have done this on Smackdown and people would be more happier or you could have them have a really good match on Smackdown and people would be happy so yeah, it was alright though, I guess 
Next up, this one, I found this really disappointing. <laughs> Sorry. It was Kofi Kingston defeating Samoa Joe to retain his WWE Championship in 9 minutes and 45 seconds. It, if, if Kofi Kingston is clear, clear to me, and that's fine, that's great. I wouldn't wish injury on anybody. And I was happy that... Happy that Kofi Kingston is still the champion, he's still the champion, but Samoa Joe looked weak. He, it pretty much took one finish. So it's great that they're trying to legitimize the trouble in paradise, but it made Samoa Joe look a bit like bleh. At least put, he didn't really pull up much of that. He destroyed it. He was beaten up for most of the match by Trouble in Paradise, and I don't know when Kofi's still the champ. I kind of wish they did something. If there are plans for him to um, go and. What's the thing? Um, uh, if they have plans for him at, um, I don't know, maybe they have plans, they might, if they have plans for him at, um, SummerSlam, they should have made him do a bit better, because I don't think he's ever going to win the title. That's just, uh, WWE have ruined him once again. I found his Bummer's Entertainer, always kept me coming back to him and find these US title decent, just because he's the champion for anyone else, it would have been a terrible one. So, yeah, I'm just very disappointed that they just, didn't do anything with this match, it was just kind of there. So yeah, now it's time for the main event, or I should say Coleman event as we find out later. Oh, oh by the way, after um, the New Day won the tag team titles, Paul Heyman came out and said, Brock Lesnar may cash in tonight, and everybody thought, oh, he's not going to cash in. Why, what, you, you think I'm dumb? You think I'm dumb? Why would he cash in on a B-level baby? No, it's not going to happen. Well, it kind of did. So yeah, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch for the road defeated Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans in a last chance with a take on Extreme Rules mixed tag team match for both the WWE and World WWE Universal Championship and the WWE War Women's Championship. The match lasted 19 minutes and 55 seconds. It was a much better match than I thought it was going to be. It was just really good. Uh, it was extreme. This pay per view was extreme, which I like, which is why it's Extreme Rules. Because it's Extreme Rules. It wasn't like uh, last year where I think we only got like one or two Extreme Rules matches. Maybe not even that. It was just like, why is this even like a cool Extreme Rules if you don't have any like Extreme Rules gimmick matches? So yeah. But it was a really good match. The ending close of the match was uh, Baron Corbin hitting an end of days on Becky Lynch. Which I was like, oh. Ooh, I was not expecting that. It made the match entertaining. The whole match was actually really good. And Seth Rollins went ballistic because, yeah, he destroyed him with Kendo six steel chairs, hit one stomp, hit two stomps, hit three stomps, one, two, three, retains. Both Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins retain their championships. Then, Brock Lesnar with Paul Heyman, if you cash his money in the bank for a universal title match against Seth Rollins, and he won in 30 minutes, one F5, one, two, I'm like, I was okay with it. I'm like, I was like, oh, okay, you actually did a B level pay with you. Okay, I like this. But I do think it sh should be a short one with the towel. If I, because of course we now know that Seth Rollins is getting a rematch against Brock Lesnar at oh, SummerSlam, which I hope Seth Rollins wins back the title in a really good match. I just think this is going to be a nice. Uh, short term YV to kind of make him not the money in the bank contract cash and not fail. It was a pretty decent money in the bank. I quite liked him as money in the bank. So yeah, as long as he loses it at the next pay per view and he does his thing, I'm fine with this. I'm happy with this. But if he's gonna retain that SummerSlam, have been not shown up for a couple of months, then come out and jump around while Paul Emmy song and then squash someone at a pay per view. So yeah, that I would. But if it's gonna be like, then of course like that, I would not be happy. But this is alright. So overall, I really enjoyed this pay per view. I thought it was really good. It was really exciting. I really cared about the matches. There wasn't really a bad match. Although the matches that were disappointing, like Kofi Kingston versus Samoa Joe and uh, Tony Nese and Drew Gulak, like maybe the Intercontinental Title match because it was really short. I really liked the pay per view. They're still pretty good matches. So yeah, I would give it like an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. It was very, very good. So thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.